nothing happens unless God allows it to happen. I feel like it's really important to approach politics with that in mind. Like a lot of these issues are symbols of... I want you to remember this word dominion. This quite literally means, no, there's a difference between a flawed, sinful human being that is a genuine Christian and someone coming and... Like, wait, why didn't you never mention this? This is like unbelievable. <laughs> what? Now pay close attention to what he's about to say. I think this is absolutely spot on. Abraham enters Egypt and he's like, oh, it's my sister actually, take her. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Hey, would you mind hitting that subscribe button and being a part of this community with us? I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know, when you like this video, YouTube will push it out to more people and it would really help spread this message. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. Tucker Carlson recently hosted the Family Leadership Summit, which was essentially uh, the first presidential forum for the Republicans and for the 2024 presidential race. And Tucker Carlson talked one-on-one -on -one and really grilled these people, but that's not what this video is about. At the beginning of this forum, Tucker Carlson sat down with this man here and they talked a little bit. Just a little background information, if you will. Tucker Carlson said something that was quite fascinating. He really admitted something, in a way. And I think that we can all learn a lot from what Tucker Carlson says here. And I think that we need to recognize that what Tucker Carlson is about to say is really a majority of people who claim to be Christian unfortunately. But I think there's an important lesson to learn here. So let's check out what Tucker Carlson says, and I'm going to stop it every little bit because I want to point out some very important parts of what he's explaining here. So what we're seeing today is light versus dark, good versus evil. This is spiritual warfare. And what we're facing as a country right now, a lot of people say this is the most important election of my lifetime every two years. Yeah. I think a lot of people happen to believe it for 2024 that this is the most important election of, of our lifetime. We can also see what's happening in our culture today that it's going to have horrible repercussions for our children and those who are young growing up and aren't going to know the America that we knew. No, they're going to know something quite the opposite, unfortunately. Unless we do something about it, I think that we are absolutely in a time to when we are coming up in this presidential election where it is one of, if not the most important election that we will, that we certainly have faced. You explain. Well, I'm clinging to the hope that elections still matter. I, I really want to believe that because I'm, I'm American in a very fundamental way. And so I believe in, in, the, in the actual mechanics of democracy, like the people should rule, you know. Um, so, uh, but leaving aside even elections, I think it's clearly a pivot point in history. And I don't think the issues that we debate and really are in some ways distractions are the core issues at all. These things that mainstream media want you to focus on. Uh, over here, keep your gaze over here. Keep looking that way. While behind our backs, everything is going on. Secret meetings in the dark. Now pay close attention to what he's about to say. I think this is absolutely spot on. I mean, it really, there are forces, unseen forces acting on people. Um, it's funny, in February, I was like trying to think about what to do for Len. I'm not a particularly faithful or virtuous person, but like you try to do something. I already quit smoking, so like what's next? <laughs> And I thought, well, I'm just going to read the Bible. And no, I'm not going to do a Bible study. I'm a Protestant, so I feel like I have a right to kind of read it myself. And I, no, I'm sorry. I feel that way. <laughs> and, uh, I think it's fascinating that Tucker Carlson says this. You know, uh, I think one of the biggest things plaguing the Christian community, but uh, really society at large, is that we have removed the Word of God from essentially everything, even a lot of churches. Most churches today are teaching self-help, man-centered wisdom that does nothing to feed the soul or grow you closer to God, 
to strengthen your relationship with Jesus. No, it's all focused on things that are made up in man's mind in order for you to walk out feeling a little better in the moment just to slowly decline throughout the week because you aren't actually spiritually fed. And you're declining throughout the week and then Sunday hits and you're given this glorious man-centered self-help sermon that does nothing once again but give just a slight little quick glimmer of hope into something but ultimately doesn't matter. You know, we need to be in the Word of God for ourselves. And yes, you can read the Word of God. You can read the Bible for yourself, believe it or not. You know, the most important part of what he says here uh, is coming up in just a second, but I want to show you this. This is 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 through 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Tucker Carlson, self-admittingly, isn't very virtuous or a very faithful person, but I think what's happening here is that Tucker Carlson does claim to be a Christian, and he is now in the neck deep, in the middle of the Bible, reading through the Word of God. So there is hope there that the Word of God can correct and teach and show Tucker Carlson the truth. And I think that we should be praying that Tucker Carlson be open to receiving that truth so his life can be changed. I mean, when you look at the massive crowds Tucker can bring in, look at this, one of his latest videos here on Twitter, 94 million views, okay? 94 million views. Imagine if Tucker Carlson's heart was truly renewed in Jesus Christ. Imagine if Tucker Carlson didn't just proclaim the news or proclaim his thoughts or interpretations, but instead he proclaimed the truth of God's word. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And so I've been reading it since February and I'm like about halfway done. And and I haven't talked to anyone about it. And I haven't been, I've just been myself reading it. And and I've all kind of, it's like the most interesting thing I think I've ever done. Mm. It's unbelievable. <laughs> the, the amount of drama in those books <laughs> that has been hidden for me as a regular churchgoer in the Episcopal Church. Like, wait, why didn't you never mention this? This is like unbelievable. <laughs> what? So real quick, it's funny because he's, ne- he's never actually read the Bible in any real capacity in, in his entire life. And he's been going to church for most of his life. And he claims to be Episcopal. This isn't just something that is unique within that type of church that he goes to. No, this is widespread. This is this is really flooding Christianity as a whole to where we don't actually need to read the Word of God for ourselves. We can just go and hear someone give a sermon, and that's all we need. That's why we are so biblically deficient, because Christians have all but given up reading the Bible for themselves, because we've believe the lie that you don't actually need to read the Bible. You just sit there like a husk and take everything we say for face value. And you just listen to us. We have your best interests at heart. You must go through us. There is no direct connection for you going through the word of God to connect with your Savior. But the two things I have come away with after reading the entire New Testament, and I'm up to Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, is the every part, with the exception of Jesus, every figure is like really flawed. Big time. Like flawed in a way where you'd be like, I don't know if I could be friends with that person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Abraham enters Egypt and he's like, oh, it's my sister actually, take her. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I was saying to my wife, who was a, who was a religion teacher, I was like, what, why didn't anyone, what is that? And she's like, maybe the point is that God takes people who are not perfect people, not only not perfect people, like they're so imperfect again, Mm. I don't think I can have dinner with them, and uses them for these grander purposes. That's the first thing I noticed. The second... Before he gets into the second thing he noticed here, which is really deep, 
And I think it's very, uh, really wise of him to see this and shows that he actually is reading the Bible and understanding it. I like how he pointed out there that God uses flawed people, but he said, except for Jesus. Tucker Carlson is getting it. Jesus wasn't flawed. Jesus had no sin. Jesus was not a sinful person. Jesus was perfect. And that's why he was the sacrifice for our sins. He was the perfect sacrifice for our sins. His death and resurrection are the means of our salvation. But I like how he's talking about how God uses flawed people. Nobody else, aside from Jesus, is perfect. Well, you're not perfect enough to be in that position. You're not perfect enough to be in the church. No, there's a difference between a flawed, sinful human being that is a genuine Christian and someone coming and teaching a false gospel. Someone coming, claiming to be a Christian and flatly denying the truth of God's word and teaching a different gospel. But as Paul says, not that there is another gospel, but they're trying to lead you astray. There's a difference there between a flawed Christian and a false Christian. The second thing I notice is that people, while they have free will, of course, and they can make decisions and they live with the consequences of those decisions, they're not really in charge of the arc of history at all. Mm. They are being acted upon a lot. Amen. Okay? And I never really appreciated that because I'm American. And so I grew up with this feeling that we're the sum total of our choices. And well, that's not what I'm reading at all. Mm. Yeah, people's choices matter. You need to do certain things and not do other things. On the other hand, you are not in charge. You are being acted upon by a world you can't see. And that, by the way, is consistent mm. with my life experience. Like, I've seen that. I've lived that. I'm 54. And so... I feel like it's really important to approach politics with that in mind. What Tucker Carlson is saying here is absolutely true. What we are facing in our daily lives, in our society, in our culture, isn't just mere men that are doing evil things. Yes, that's happening. But what we are facing isn't just a war against flesh and blood. It's a war against a spiritual realm, a spiritual enemy. Now, before I show you his closing comments, I want you to see this real quick. This is Ephesians chapter 6. This says in verse 10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. This is saying that the devil is scheming and we must put on the armor of God. Partly how we do that is by being in the Word of God and learning how to withstand the enemy through biblical means. Verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And then 1 Peter chapter 5 backs us up. Check this out. Verse 8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Satan is constantly on the move. Demons, his minions, his, his legion army of satanic forces are constantly on the prowl seeking someone to devour, and they will devour you like that. That's why we must stay steadfast in the truth of God's word, personally, for ourselves. Verse 9 says, Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. We are not alone in this. This isn't unique to us to be spiritually attacked, to go through funks, to go through roller coaster times where we feel like we're just in the depths of despair and sometimes we feel like we're on the highest peak ever in our lives. We just feel so great. That's not unique for us personally to be attacked by Satan, by the enemy, by satanic forces 
all of our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through this throughout the world. Verse 10, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Verse 11, To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I want you to remember this word dominion. This quite literally means sovereignty or control. God is sovereign. God is in control. To him, to God, be the control forever and ever. To God be the sovereignty. God is sovereign and in control of everything, always. So I feel like it's really important to approach politics with that in mind. Like a lot of these issues are symbols of this much larger battle. And, and the final thing I will say is I do think we should approach these questions with humility. Amen. You know, we don't always know. I was at dinner last night at 801, which I strongly recommend. Surprisingly good lobster, kind of weird for Iowa. I'm like, is this from the coast of Iowa? No, but it was good. But anyway, we were talking about candidates and I was eating with someone who's a Christian and I, and I said, I can't, honestly, I can't tell if this person is a tool of light or darkness, you know what I mean? Um, so we don't always know, actually, at all. And we should always admit that. <laughs> now, this is an important point to remember of what he's saying here. We don't always know. But the thing is, is that we are in a war, a spiritual war, that is raging all around us constantly. And it's never going to end until Jesus returns and puts the enemy under his feet. He destroys them. But look at these scriptures that talk about exactly what Tucker Carlson is saying he is getting from reading the Bible. Now, you read this. This is Daniel chapter 4. For his dominion. Remember the word dominion here. For his control, his sovereignty is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom endures from generation to generation all the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing and he does according to his will among the hosts of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say to him what have you done proverbs chapter 21 the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. God is in complete control. God is sovereign. God has full dominion over the earth, humanity, and everything spiritual, and everything around us. God is the creator and the controller of everything. Nothing happens unless God allows it to happen. Now check out Psalm 135, verse 6. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all the deeps. There is nowhere you can hide that God is not in control. There is no depth too low, no high too high, that God is not in control from one end of the universe to the other. God is sovereign. It is God's dominion and God is in control. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. God has predestined all things and works all things according to his will. And we can see that in Romans eight twenty-eight here, this is a verse that is misquoted all the time but check it out it says and we know that for those who love God all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose this is not talking about earthly comforts this is not talking about God has worked all things together for good in my life, meaning he's given me this and he's given me that and he's blessed me with this and I have this car and live in this mansion and live in, have this much money. The good there is growing you closer to your Savior. You bearing fruit that gives witness to the goodness of God. Now, it's quite fascinating 
that Tucker Carlson decided to just read the Bible. And he's come away with some of these very wise things that he's saying here that he's recognizing, wait, I'm reading scripture and I'm seeing all around me these things come to pass, these things happening. The, the spiritual war going on around us, that there is an explanation for what's going on around us. It's not just left up to human wisdom to try to figure out because human wisdom will never figure it out. It'll always be theorized on this or that that points away from God, but that's not how it works at all. You know, Tucker Carlson is in a prime position here. His heart is being primed to receive truth and to accept that truth. And I think that we should pray that someone like Tucker Carlson and the massive reach that Carlson has can have a changed heart by reading the word of God, which remember 2 Timothy says that God's word is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And please hit that subscribe button. Be a part of this community. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread this message. And you can check out some of our shirts in the description below, some biblically inspired clothing to represent truth everywhere you go. And also the Daily Grace Company, you can check out some awesome Bible study tools. Again, these will be linked in the description below. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.